Greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. Today's episode, we're going to talk about selecting hard to reach vertices. And I am going to focus on Blender, but one of the techniques I learned in Tinkercad. Right off the bat, Blender already gives you a lot of tools for making selections. Uh, first off, when you're in edit mode, you can choose between whether or not you want to, to work with uh, actual vertices, or if you want to select edges, or if you want to do faces. And then it also gives you the ability to multi-select, so you can hold down your control key to do patterns, and it'll take the shortest route that it can find between the two things that you click on. Uh, you can hold down the shift key just to like actually pick very specific things that you want to select. You have uh, tools where you can actually draw a box or a different shape around for your selection. And then finally, there's an x-ray mode that will allow you to see through your object to click through. Uh, sometimes the wireframe mode is helpful for selections as well. And another thing you could do if you want to select a ring of edges or faces, you can hold down your alt key when you select it and I'll select everything that's kind of attached to it, that actual ring. But sometimes I have some tricky situations and all of these tools together, I need a little extra help. So uh, today I am sharing two tips of selecting hard to reach vertices. I have a friend from college who independently got into 3D printing and she's the one who taught me this next technique. We were teaching a Tinkercad class together and one of the students along the lines um, got one object kind of stuck inside of another. And they had made a bunch of other changes, so it really wasn't a good opportunity for control Z or undo. Uh, my instinct was like, oh, we'll just go ahead and select this object and move it out of the way. Um, but before I could get there, uh, Chris Sorensen had a better idea. Chris advised the student to select everything and then to simply unselect all the stuff that could be seen. And that left the one piece that you couldn't see. And at that point, you're able to make corrections. One way I've used that strategy of selecting by deselecting in Blender is with the edge and face selection mode. What I have on the screen here is the model for my fly guy ornament, uh, which you may have seen in the googly eyes video. I had done some edits to this model to move everything up to make room for some tan layers uh, for the nose. And when I did my initial print, I noticed an oddity with the coloring and I came back and took a look at the model. And when I switched into edit mode, I did get a stronger visual of what's going on. And it did look like when I was moving everything up, I missed one vertex. And so I was actually having trouble picking the the vertice in question or the vertex in question. Uh, when I went to x-ray mode, ooh, there's so much going on. It was a little confusing. So what I did instead was take advantage of that lesson that I learned from Chris Sorensen, uh, which is I switched to edge mode. I selected the edge that I wanted, switched back to vertex mode, and then I unselected the vertice that, or the vertex that I could see. And that left, the only thing that was selected was the vertex that I wanted to manipulate and to move. Another example of selecting by deselecting came with my recent peep string art project. So if you watch that video, I made uh, my base frame that I wanted uh, for my string art, and I wanted to cut out a smaller uh, size bunny to kind of hollow it out. And so what I had done there was I uh, made a copy of the bunny and I duplicated it and separated it out. I went ahead and inset it. So I had this inside bunny and that's the size of the bunny that I want to carve out of my other piece. So I wanted to get rid of all of these extra faces that came from the inset. Now, I do have to confess, I started off with just holding down my control key and I started highlighting each of the outline faces that I wanted to delete. And then I realized, oh, there's an easier way to do this. So I just went ahead and selected everything. I held down my shift key and unselected the face that I wanted to keep. Then I hit my delete button and deleted the faces that I didn't want. So I was able to select what I wanted by deselecting. One final strategy I use in Blender is selecting with scale. 
you may already be aware that you know when you're trying to select things hey zooming in and getting really really close makes things a little bit easier to see what you're working with well you can also scale your entire object to make it a bit easier for selecting things let me show you what i mean this is a monarch butterfly ornament that i do on my etsy shop it is a remix of a wonderful model by thing at first user liv havlin and I print it in multicolors. So I do the first two millimeters in orange, and then I do 0 0.3 millimeters, just three layers of uh, white, and then I finish up with 0.4 millimeters of black. Well, if a situation came up and I wanted to go ahead and um, increase the amount of white layers that I'm doing, uh, I wanna go ahead and brain up the vertices just for my white and my black and I want to move them up so I can do another layer of white in the mix. I would have to go ahead and edit and I would want to uh, pick just the portions that aren't going to be orange and you know this can get tedious. So I could take advantage of Blender's x-ray mode right and then it's just when you line it up and it's just everything so close it's going to be very difficult for me to precisely pick uh, just the pieces that I want without getting any of the orange in there in the mix as well. But what I can do is a little hack over here. I go back to my object mode and I can see right now it's just a delicate 2.7 millimeters. I can go ahead and temporarily scale this up to 27 millimeters and it just stretches everything out for me. So when I go back into edit mode, now it's going to be a lot easier with this x-ray mode to isolate out the sections that I do want to select here and leave out the parts that I don't. So here's the beauty of this. Um, I can go back, let's turn off x-ray mode, and I'm back in object mode. I can go ahead and scale it back down. I haven't made any changes yet, uh, but when I go back, I have my portions that are selected and I'm able to go ahead and move just those up. So it remembers what I selected uh, when the scale was really, really big. Um, even when I scale it down, everything that I selected before is still selected and I can go ahead and make my edits that way. Well, that's today's video. I hope some of this translates to your 3D modeling and is helpful to you. Either way, thank you for watching and have a great day.